Welcome to Knowledge 5, Lesson 8, The Aztec, Cortez's Letter. Your Majesty, in order to fully describe the city of Tenochtitlan and the Emperor Moctezuma, it would require more writers than just myself and it would take a very long time. I will not be able to fully explain everything, but I will do my best to describe the amazing things we have seen. The Aztec state is in the shape of a circle. It is completely surrounded by tall mountains. There are two lakes that take up almost the entire valley in which the city is located. One of the lakes is fresh water and the other is a saltwater lake. The great city of Tenochtitlan is made up of two islands that sit in the middle of the salt lake, Lake Texcoco. There are four entrances to this enormous city. In order to cross over the lake into the city, large bridges were constructed. The bridges are so wide that as many as 10 horses walking side by side could cross them. The main streets are very wide and straight. Some of the smaller streets are made of land and some are made of water, similar to streams or canals. The people of the city use canoes to travel in the streets made of water. There are several main squares, all of which contain markets. Squares are open areas in a village or city. One of the squares is very large, and on any given day there are thousands of people in it buying and selling things. Because there are so many different kinds of products, it would be impossible to name every single thing. But some of the items include precious stones, shells, feathers, medicines, wood, coal, sleeping mats, clothing, and pottery. Along with all the items that are for sale, there are also restaurants and barber shops. A building like a courthouse also sits in the market. People in this building are like judges resolving arguments and ordering punishment for criminals. Also in Tenochtitlan, there are many beautiful temples. The priests or religious leaders live in a part of each temple and dress in black. These priests wear the exact same clothing for their whole lives and they never cut or comb their hair. Since the lake surrounding the city is a salt water lake, there are aqueducts that carry the water from the freshwater lake into the city. The aqueducts carry the water over the bridge, and once over the bridge, the water is distributed throughout the city to be used up for drinking and for other purposes. The water from the aqueducts makes up the whole city's water supply. It is quite amazing to see. Order has been established and is well kept in the city. The people of the city are very friendly and courteous to one another and behave much in the same way as Spaniards. I found this most surprising because of how different they and their city look from ours. In regard to Emperor Moctezuma, his empire is quite unbelievable. I have been unable to find out how large of an area he rules. I believe he rules a land at least as large as Spain. However, I have seen with my own eyes his great wealth. He possesses many, many objects made from gold, silver, and other precious metals, all made by wonderful craftsmen. Within the city, 
there are quite a few palaces so wondrous that I could not possibly describe them adequately. One of the smaller palaces is attached to a beautiful garden with a balcony that runs over top of it. Two high-ranking princes live inside this palace. Also, inside the palace are ten pools of water. Some of the pools are of salt water and some are of fresh water. In each of the pools live different kinds of birds. The birds that need salt water live in the salt water pools and the birds that need fresh water live in the fresh water pools. Each type of bird is given the type of food that it likes best, whether it's worms, maize, seeds, or fish. The royalty here are able to just look out a window and be amused by the birds in the various pools. I have tried to write these descriptions as truthfully as I can, so that Your Majesty may have an accurate picture of this part of the world. Your humble servant, Hernán Cortés. <laughs>